here for the filth ballers here in the top of the six. Peyton Larson, Carson Burnett, and Matthew Rivers, the two, three, four hitters here for the filth ballers. As you get another look at the beautiful sky that's setting over Seymour Smith Park here tonight in Omaha slash La Vista slash Ralston, Nebraska. Yeah, the, the filth ballers have done a really good job here slowing down the Red Raiders who had a pretty hard, uh, hot start uh, getting a run in the first inning, getting one in the third, closing in the lead to the to the filth ballers. But, you know, getting those two run uh, two runs after that score, they've held them off runless since. So hopefully they can uh, uh, keep that going in these last two innings. As we see a new pitcher out on the mound for the Red Raiders as Austin Sheever takes the mound here for the Red Raiders out there as he will come on for his appearance today as we've seen a lot of Red Raiders pitchers, but this will be Sheever's, I believe his third game of the year. Sheever, the right-hander, delivers the first pitch strike to Peyton Larson. 9.36 local time here in Omaha, Nebraska. It is a beautiful night for ball. This is the 0-1. The slider is a little too far off the plate, nodding the count up at one apiece. As a baseball fan, I think if there's one thing you can appreciate, it's a, it's a, it's a nice night baseball game that mm -hmm. doesn't last too long. Right. Which I, I don't think this one's been going pretty quickly, so I don't think it's going to. This has been a very quick moving ball game. Correct. 1-1 one, one is the count here to Peyton Larson. Well, quick moving with still plenty of action, plenty of great plays that we've seen. As Peyton Decent Larson scoring. swings and misses for strike two. I would agree, yeah. We've seen, I mean, it's been, I think, like, yeah, we're in the top of the six. It's been a lot of action. 4-2 mm -hmm. ball game, but we've still got about an inning and a half left. Peyton Larson does a good job staying alive after the high foul tip. Fouls it straight back. As Peyton Larson looks to keep the count where it's at or get on base here. That one and two. As Peyton Larson watches strike three down in the zone. Nice one-two pitch from Austin Sheever, and that'll be the first out of the top of the six here for the Red Raiders. Now that one, the third baseman from Owen College, number 21, Carson Burnett. It's Carson Burnett steps up to the plate. He had a triple in his last at-bat. As you could tell the moment that ball dropped and he was rounding first that he was thinking either second or third. Burnett grounds this one over to Jackson Steele. He's going to have to make a quick play. Steele gets him in time. The nice play from Jackson Steele as he had to charge all the way up from his shortstop position. Gets him in time for the second out of the top of the sixth. We've seen a lot of great plays from our infield of the Red Raiders here. They've shown a lot of great awareness and quick movement to the ball and then slinging it to whatever base they need to make the play. Yeah, we've seen a lot of defense. I've been real impressed with the defense we've seen on both sides of uh, the alley here today. As Matthew Rivers grounds one over to third, Ty Beasley will get that one and throw a missile over to first in time. Quick inning for Austin Sheever. He goes three up, three down in the top of the sixth. We go down to the bottom of the sixth to see if the Red Raiders can respond at the plate. Three outs remain for the Filth Ballers here in the start of the seventh inning. You're getting a look into their dugout as tensions have been high for these two ball clubs the last couple of half innings. And we saw the Red Raiders score five unanswered runs. Can the Filth Ballers do the same here in the top of the seventh? I'm not sure. They haven't had the quite the momentum that uh, the Filth Ball, or sorry, that the Red Raiders have right now, being scoreless in the last two innings. However, that was the same spot that the Red Raiders were in. They didn't score it in the past two innings here, so we'll see what they can piece together here at the top of the seventh. Anything can happen in the game of baseball as Aston Shaver goes out there for his second inning of relief work. We've seen crazier things happen in a ball game as Tristan Brandt takes his 
First pitch ball, and it's a ball, making it 1-0. You know it's high intensity when the media guys are all standing up here in the dugout. We can feel the energy up here in the, du in the up in the press box. We, we, we understand the high leverage situation. The 1-0 to Brandt. Brandt dribbles that one out to Ty Poor. Ty Poor gets it, and he will throw it on to first. In time for the first out, that's a big first out for the Red Raiders. Score that one a 4-3 to three ground out for Ty Poor to Connor Weeks. Right. Now batting. Oh, right, the chance the, uh, the, of the filth ballers, you know, scoring uh, perhaps a five-run inning that the, uh, you know, Red Raiders piece together, you know, with that easy, quick first out, the chances of that happening drops uh, drastically. As we see the shortstop today for the filth ballers, and he takes strike one. Filth ballers have two outs remaining here. So we see Brendan Hillis. No one. Just off the plate for ball one. One and one is the count. This is about as high leverage as a situation for Austin Cheever and the Red Raiders that you can possibly get as the one one will be outside for ball two. These are the type of moments that you live for as a baseball player, though. You kind of, like, live and die and, and breathe by these moments. Right. It's those moments that you, you're dreaming of as a kid, that clutch moment. You know, your team is down, hitting that nuke to put the game away. <laughs> right. The, the runners on first and second, two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning in the World Series type of moment. Mm -hmm. I think every ball player has had a dream like that at some point. Exactly. And the tensions are being felt by the dogs here. <laughs> Seymour Smith. As we got the 2-2 on its way. Good poke right there by Hillis, but it goes right into the glove of the first baseman. That's going to be an unassisted put out for Connor Wees. And filth ballers are down to their final out here in the unprobable turn of events here in the top of the seventh. Right. I mean, it all comes down to this, really, if they want any shot. I mean, th this is their only shot of winning the game, uh, which we would have not expected the inning prior to this with a, uh, a nice, safe 4-2 lead. As we will see number 16 for the Filth Ballers step up to the plate. Number 16 is Jacob Martin. Jacob Martin, this, the game comes down to Jacob Martin to see if he can keep the Filth Ballers alive. He takes the 0 1 pitch outside for ball one. We've seen some instant classics so far in this 2023 season. I think it's safe to say this might be one of them. Five run inning for the Red Raiders. It's not something you're going to see yeah. every night. Jacob Martin grounds to tie poor, tie poor. Throws it on the first, and that'll be the ball game. And the Red Raiders with five unanswered runs in the bottom of the sixth come back after being down a majority of the game and get the 7-4 to four win over the Filth Ballers, and they get their second win of the season. Absolutely heartbreaking for the Filth Ballers, who I'm sure they thought they had this one in the bag but they clearly did not, and this is absolutely electrifying for the Red Raiders who have had a rough start to their season as this second, uh, this second win to a top-tier team like the Filth Ballers. It's really important for how the rest of their season could go. I agree, and the Red Raiders get a nice 7-4 win against the Filth Ballers. When we come back, we'll recap the game, and we'll have your player of the game interview right here on the Corn Belt League Network. 